to Play Ball. Welcome to the podcast with no limits. Whether it be sports, current events, or random thoughts, this is the place to step in and stay a while. Your host is a proud alumnus of Rio Hondo Prep, a former minor league baseball umpire, and a man with strong opinions. Welcome to the Get Home Safe podcast and your host, Matt Persima. Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Get Home Safe. I have a wide range of topics today for our weekly episode here on the podcast. Um, Some sad, some happy, some angry, uh, a little bit of everything today. We're going to come to you and hit you with a wide range of emotions. Uh, A lot of it revolves around sports, as always. Uh, But right off the bat today um i got to come to you guys with some uh some unfortunate news very sad news i woke up to this morning um you know any any sad news is tugs at your heart a little bit but this one um this one this one hurts a little bit more um it being so close to home um i know that it is affecting uh, a few um, young men that i actually know um a coach that i know and is uh, has been very cordial and friendly with me um here in um, Glendora, uh, at the corner of Grand and Mauna Loa, uh, unfortunately, on uh, yesterday morning around 11 o'clock yesterday, um, Wednesday, October 5th, uh, a member of the Citrus College football team, Luke Pruitt, uh, was killed in a motorcycle accident. I don't know if he was on his way to practice or, or leaving campus or what, but pretty close there to Citrus College, an intersection I've gone through many times as a student at Citrus, uh, as an official, just as a Uber driver, just as a person. And um, he was uh, on his motorcycle and apparently a uh, an SUV made a U-turn and hit him. Um, I don't know Luke. I never met Luke, uh, but I know that he's a teammate of three guys from, uh, from Rio Hondo Prep that are on that team. Uh, coach Brandon Hayashi, the head coach at Citrus. Um, I've had the opportunity to get to know a little bit and, and uh, had him on the podcast a few uh, months back. Uh, just an incredible guy. I know he is hurting right now. I know the entire Owls program is hurting right now. And, um, uh, you know, the Pruitt family, uh, a family here in Claremont. Uh, Luke went to Claremont High School and uh, was a captain on the Citrus College Owls football team. So. Um, 19 years old i believe that is correct just a just a sad sad day and a sad uh moment for the citrus college community talked about their football program uh, a little bit here in the uh in the recent episodes um i don't want this show isn't going to be all sad but i did want to mention this right off the bat just terrible unfortunate news um coming out of citrus college and again this is right around the corner now, up a few miles away from uh, where I sit, but not many miles. And having gone to Citrus, I know a lot of people who've gone to Citrus um, for this to happen in uh, Glendora is just just awful. And there's there's big tragedies around the world, right? Um, I know this, this crazy stuff happens every day, but just when it hits home like this, very unfortunate news. I was just at a Claremont football game last week. Um, I know Mr. Pruitt here has graduated since then, but I was there uh, watching them play South Hills and I know uh, their community is hurting. And so thoughts and prayers to the Citrus program, to the Pruitt family, to uh, Claremont and to uh, Jonathan Guerrero, Alex Vasquez and Royal Young, uh, recent graduates of Real Hondo Prep who are on that Citrus College football team. Um, I know they're probably hurting and a lot of their teammates are hurting. So thoughts and prayers to you guys. Number 97 for Citrus College, Luke Pruitt uh, passes away way too soon. Uh, He wore number 61 at Claremont and uh, was a defensive lineman and a captain on the citrus college football team. So, you know, hold those loved ones uh, close. You never know, you know, us guys, we don't always, don't always want to hug our loved ones. We're going to be Mr. Tough guy, you know, here and there. And uh, Hey, there's nothing wrong with telling, uh, telling people you love them because you just never know, man, this world is so crazy. Sometimes the the way things are now, um, anything can happen at any time. And this is a young guy, young man, his whole life ahead of him, um, promising football player, uh, student and, just gone far too young. So um, to the Pruitt family thoughts and prayers from the get home safe podcast and to citrus college to coach Hayashi. Um, I know he's hurting right now and he's got to rally those guys. They're off to a five and zero start. This was their bye week. All was supposed to be well, right? Rest up and everything. And 
then you get a tragedy like this. So um, I'm sure we'll we'll keep you guys updated of the the news there at Citrus College. But um, just just awful news, awful way to start uh, this morning, an awful way to start the show. And I will try to get it a little more loose here in moving forward. Um, but I did want to mention that right at the top um, so that we don't go back to it after joking around about some other things. Okay, lots to talk about here uh, this week. And I know I got a lot of messages from uh, the uh, forever faithful people, uh, faithful to the Bay people, which I always, you know, got to remind them of their their motto um, since they're not in the Bay. But we'll get to that stuff in a minute. Um, I have a few random thoughts. Uh, the MLB playoffs are starting this weekend, starting Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I do like what Major League Baseball has done uh, with their playoffs here in in adding an extra wild card team, so two wild card teams, which which has been around a few years, but instead of a one game playoff, we're doing a three game series. I like that you play mostly three game series all year, and uh, if you don't win your division, you should have to do something extra to get into uh, the 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 round of eight to play all the uh, division winners, right? So. Uh, your division winners were as follows out of the NL, excuse me, AL, uh, AL West, the Houston Astros, like it or not, they are the uh, number one seed, uh, number two seed, the New York Yankees. And congrats to Aaron Judge on becoming the all-time leading home run hitter in, well, not all-time, in a single season, the single season all-time home run leader. Congrats to you, 62 home runs hit legally. I mean, uh, just a, an astounding feat. Way to go, uh, Aaron Judge. And I didn't know much about Aaron Judge. I knew he was uh, a California guy, went to Fresno State. He's a big-time athlete, was recruited in all these other different sports. And I mentioned this last week as he was chasing 61. But uh, one thing I didn't know about Aaron Judge, I thought the media would, would have jumped all over this and, and mentioned this to us uh, constantly, but I haven't heard much. But uh, I didn't know he was, he was an adopted adopted kid. And I thought that's incredible. And if you think about it, you know, Babe Ruth hits 60. I don't want to leave out Roger Maris here. Babe Ruth hits 60. Aaron Judge hits uh, 62. Two guys, uh, Babe Ruth, uh, an orphan, right, was in an orphanage. And then Aaron Judge, a guy that uh, was adopted. I mean, I don't know. That's that's kind of kind of creepy, kind of cool. Like, I, I, I think that's awesome. So, um, yeah, a story within a story is always cool. And I know ESPN and all these other alleged sports networks are are always looking for stories. And I don't know why they didn't mention that as often as I think they probably should have. So congrats to the Judge family on raising an outstanding young man. And as I mentioned before, I haven't heard many bad things about Aaron Judge. I don't see him argue a whole lot. I mean, nobody's perfect. I'm sure someone can point to something or other, but um, seems like a classy dude and a guy that carries himself professionally. So congrats on being the all-time who, who would have thought you could hit 62 home runs in a season? Pretty cool. And and I didn't necessarily love all the live cut-ins of Monday Night Football and college football, right? We got to see Aaron Judge's head. I don't uh, – I get it, but I'm also like, what are we doing here? Maybe if you put it in a tiny box at the bottom or something, but to, like, cut your college football game in half. I, I didn't love that very much. And I know technology, hey, if they could have done that in the uh, 1960s, then they would have, but – Anyway, I'll leave it at that. Congrats to Aaron Judge. And, yeah, I know I'm leaving off Sammy Sosa, Mark McGuire, and uh, what's that guy's name? Barroid Bonds. Uh, we're we're not going to – I don't know. Uh, they're still in the record books. I understand that. But um, I don't have to acknowledge their greatness, do I? Although that summer chase of 1998 was pretty awesome. I mean, that was pretty neat, seeing Mark McGuire. And I mentioned that last week, Sammy Sosa. At the time – and to think that they, that they were on two rival teams, that Cubs Cardinals rivalry was a real big deal. Um, so for that to happen then was was really cool. And and as a kid, and for it to f come out later, steroids, you know, Sammy Sosa playing what I I didn't, I didn't do anything. Mark McGuire fi finally admitting it uh, later on, and then uh, Barry Bonds, he just he he just faded off into the sunset. What I didn't do anything wrong. Um, so. I know everyone was doing it, right? Just because everyone was doing it doesn't necessarily make it right. So uh, Aaron Judge gets, um, I don't know, he gets the record in my book, 62. It's pretty cool that I know we hate the Yankees. As a, as a right, we're supposed to hate the Yankees. And uh, my mom liked the Yankees. I was like, Mom, what? I'm from New York. Yeah, but you're from Flushing. You're, you, you're be a Mets fan, right? You're right, right there in Queens. But anyway, 
um, always reminding me of the Yankee greatness. So Aaron Judge, 62, Roger Maris, 61, and Babe Ruth, 60. That's pretty cool. There's something romantic about baseball, as they often say, right? So I think that's uh, that's pretty neat indeed. Uh, anyway, uh, back to the bracket. And isn't a postseason better when you have a bracket? I'm a visual guy. I love I love the visual of a bracket. You just know who's going to play who. And uh, in the NFL, it's, it's a little different because you play the highest remaining seed and stuff like that. But I don't know. I love a good bracket, no matter what it is. Um, so Yankees are the two seed champions of the AL East and the three seed. The Cleveland Indians. Yes, the Cleveland Indians. Pardon my French, as they say. I don't know. Uh, the Cleveland Indians, uh, the third team, uh, third division champion, I should say. And then that leaves. What am I? Am I what am I doing wrong here? There's three division champs. Three wild cards, right? Yeah. Okay. So they added the wild cards. So we have. The Blue Jays out of the AL East. The Mariners, congrats to them, out of the AL West. And the Tampa Bay Rays out of the AL East. So three teams in that uh, out of the AL East, pretty cool. Um, it will be the Blue Jays against the Mariners this weekend and the Indians against the, the Rays this weekend. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, best two out of three. Um some would say, why don't they play a five game series? Well, I mean, we can't do this forever. I like the current format. Let's go three game series. If it's two in queue, you know, lose two games, O2 barbecue uh for the summer, then or for the, the fall, I guess. Then we move we move on. So the winner of the Tampa Bay Cleveland Indians um wild card weekend round, whatever the whatever they're calling this, the wild card uh, series will play the New York Yankees and the winners of the Seattle Mariners. Toronto Blue Jays will go down to Houston to play the Houston Astros. Now to the NL, the champions, the overall seed, the 111 win Los Angeles Dodgers uh, had quite themselves a season. Now it's time to answer the critics. Can they win a World Series in a full season? Not a 60 game little, you know, uh, travel ball circuit thing. Can they win a World Series? Um after of 162 game season because 162 game season it has its wears and tears you know it it it's 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 the grind it's about not just hey let's put the, the 12 best teams together it's like you know who earned it over a course of time and the dodgers have ob obviously earned the number one seed and uh they look explosive they look like they have it all um but we'll see again when october hits you turn the page to october you throw the records out you know, it's uh, who has the best day on the mound usually. And um, it's all good teams, man. There's no, no off nights here uh, in the, in the postseason. So the Dodgers number one seed, the defending champion, Atlanta Braves, the two seed out of the NL East uh, clipping the uh, New York Mets who were leading all year. And then, you know, that series last weekend, anyway, they, uh, that Brett's Brett's Braves Mets rivalry is uh is pretty pretty great alive and well indeed the number three seed the st louis cardinals the champions of the nl central will uh host the six seed the excuse me the philadelphia phillies from the uh the nl east who are the final playoff spot that final wild card spot and then uh two two uh teams of note the new york mets and the san diego padres fill out the wild card series the winner of that will play LA. So the Dodgers will either get the Mets or the Padres. Uh, I, I like both of those matchups, you know, sentimental reason, obviously SoCal series would be great uh, in a short series. I don't know. No, you know, beware. Anything can happen there. Right. We've seen great teams get beaten a short series in the divisional round. So uh, be ready to go. Dodgers uh, three game series this weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday for the wild card teams. And then I think they get going the following Tuesday, right, right away for the, uh, the divisional round. So uh, the Dodgers and Braves await their opponents. I, I saw the St. Louis Cardinals do something uh, in, in the, their final home game of the season. Thought it was pretty neat. And baseball is romantic this way. And now everyone's kind of doing this. I did see the angels, Kurt Suzuki, Cal state Fullerton alum, uh, world series, uh, college world series champion in 04 uh, world series champion in 20. What was that? Probably 19 with the uh, nationals 
uh, just a great MLB career. He retired. I think he caught one pitch for the Angels in their game at Oakland, and then uh, they took him out of the game. Nice little ovation. And he started his career in Oakland, which I thought was pretty cool for the Angels to do. I think the Angels did hire uh, uh, Phil Nevin full, as a full-time manager uh, going forward as well. But Kurt Suzuki, congrats on a great career as a fellow Titan. But what the Cardinals did, one of the best baseball franchises, I really do believe. You got New York, you got L.A., but the consistency of the St. Louis Cardinals there in the Midwest has been pretty, pretty something, uh, something to see. I mean, Cincinnati, Kansas City, these used to be iconic baseball cities, right? But really, it's been the St. Louis Cardinals who've kind of been there on the outskirts from the Chicago Cubs and, and the glitz and the glamour of the bigger cities, really, that has just been consistent um, baseball team in a baseball city for a long time so uh, as a dodger fan we hate those st louis cardinals but i don't know there's a little respect i have for them uh the way they they run their operation and their fan base seems pretty great too so the st louis cardinals in their last home game of the season um yadier melita was ladier melina was catching uh adam wainwright was on the mound and uh i think it was the uh, Albert Pujols playing first base. So they all went to the mound and all three of those guys who's meant so much to the great city of St. Louis came off the field uh, at the same time, much like when, uh, who was it? Uh, was it Jeter and Posada went to the mound to bring out Mariano Rivera for his last time. And they walked him off the mound. But this time, this was, this was unique. This was three guys that have meant so much to St. Louis coming off the field at the same time. Pretty awesome stuff. I know we don't like St. Louis Cardinals here in SoCal, but that was pretty neat. Uh, three guys that uh, presume to be retiring uh, this year uh, have had great careers and have won uh, all kinds of World Series and stuff. So uh, great stuff there. I'm looking forward to this wild card weekend because Friday, man, Friday comes around. We got 9 a.m. baseball here on the West Coast. Games at like 9, 11, 1, and 5. Like four games on Friday, four games on Saturday. And if any teams can push it to a game three. We'll have four more on Sunday. And it's this instant boom, boom, boom. Baseball is great when you have that immediate, uh, that immediate, en uh, uh, not energy, but just urgency, immediate urgency of like, okay, this is it. Every pitch matters, right? In a regular season, the baseball slow, I know, and this and that. But, uh, man, playoff baseball is great. I know the games go four hours and it's no fun, but – Sometimes uh, good things uh, take a long time. You know what I mean? <laughs> so uh, anyway, it's going to be a great weekend of baseball. And then uh, after, you know, this weekend, presumably Sunday, uh, unless there's any rain or, or delays of any kind, we will be down to the final eight teams going forward into the divisional round. So I, I don't know much about these teams. I guess who I would like to see. Um, the Cleveland Indians change their name. So I, I kind of want them to lose the Mariners blue Jays. Eh, I've got to go Seattle there at USA over Canada. Plus the Mariners haven't been in the playoffs in a long time. And uh, you know, sorry, sorry, Toronto, sorry, blue Jays. Uh, I don't, I don't like the, well, I don't like the way Seattle's run either, but we'll give the nod to the Mariners, uh, and, and, and a potential AL, uh, AL West matchup Mariners Astros there. And then St. Louis, Philly. Uh, I don't know. I, I'd like to see St. Louis go forward. I'm not a huge Bryce Harper fan. Uh, and the Phillies, I know they haven't been in there in a while, but St. Louis, again, back to that iconic baseball uh, tradition. I think eh, let's see them go forward and face the Atlanta Braves, San Diego, New York Mets. I don't, I'm, this is a toss up for me. You know what? A real toss up. I love the LA New York angle, a uh, little revenge from a few years ago when they, the, the Mets knocked the Dodgers out of the playoffs. I mean, there's something about beating your little brother, right? San Diego Padres, uh, San Diego, LA in a five game series. That could be cool too. So uh toss up, I guess if I got to pick some, I'd go Mets just cause my mom's from, uh, from Queens. Uh, I like the LA New York rivalry and San Diego. It would be fun to see them not even reach the next round. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the upcoming MLB playoffs. Cheers to baseball, 9. AM, 10. AM first pitches. I mean, and it's on all day. It's like March. You know, you got to look around the corner. Is the boss watching? Can I throw this up on the screen? You're watching, uh, you know, I listen to podcasts all the time, but but during the baseball playoffs, I always have the uh, MLB uh, MLB uh, playoff game on, whichever one's going. Unless Jessica Mendoza is broadcasting, then I kind of flip to another game. Can't stand her. Ugh. Can't stand the way she uh, talks down to uh, fans. Anyway, just my thoughts. I won't preach. I'll move forward. I told you, more positive, positive stuff today. Um, Speaking of kind of, on that note, you ever been in an argument with someone? And 
I've told you before about when people just start smearing you and they start name calling you, they got nothing. You've won the argument, basically. Um, even people that I agree with, I'm like, dude, you're doing the things you always say other people do when they lose it. All you do is smear. Give me something. Give me some data. Give me some facts. Give me something. Or my favorite one, though, is when you're talking about something and and just randomly listing the year. Just randomly, like what what I mean is, oh come on, Matt, it's 2022. I'm like, yeah, let me check my phone at the calendar. Yeah, it is 2022. What does that mean? It's also uh, 11 o'clock a.m. Like what 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 is what what is randomly announcing what year it is? What does that mean? Are you saying we've evolved and and we 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 are not something that we were 50 years ago? Come on, man, it's 2022. You got to get on board. On board with what? Just because I make an observation about something doesn't mean, oh, you're you're just a horrible person. But you ever get, come on, that's going to be my new thing. Anytime uh, something comes up, come on, man, it's 2022. Oh, come on, man, it's Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. I get, Maybe that's the only fact that the person in the argument has is to announce the year. That's my thought. Come on, man. It's 2022. Thank you. Thank you for the update, calendar update. Do you have any other facts that you can like say that are meaningful? Meaningful facts? Maybe you're not used to saying things that are true, so you just said the first true thing that comes to your mind. There's that too. These are the things I think about, guys. I, I hear these saying, I'm just, what are you talking about? It's because if you're if you're critical about I don't know a fam uh, structure of the family or something, or you you critical about the the way someone plays the game in baseball, for instance. Oh come on, it's 2022. That's not an argument. All it is is saying the year. Like, like, like <laughs> am I the only crazy one here? Like, why why is this a thing? We've come a long way. I get it. I get it. Totally get it. We've achieved some great things. We don't believe a lot of things we used to believe, although that's not always a good thing. You know, you know, one thing I like is tradition. Tradition is a great thing. We love tr tradition in college football. We love uh, traditions and holidays, right? But we tend to like, Ooh, get get shaky or something like traditional values. Like that's something that is the boogeyman or something. Traditional values. What are you saying? No, nothing. Just like you know, families and good stuff like that. Like <laughs> careers, fam. I don't know. Just I. It, traditional is something that I think there's a there's a large group of people in the country, mostly from the left side of the aisle that want to tear down traditions, literally like tear them down. Um, traditional values, for instance, I saw that uh, as I was driving by care youth league um, the other day at, at Wingate park. And I saw that on the, one of their signs. It was like, I like that. That says a lot. That says a lot about an organization and kind of says a lot without saying a lot. So traditional values is uh, something I, I I like, and I'm trying to get, there's a lot of areas of my life that I need to get in line, we'll say. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not uh, preaching uh, from my pulpit here or talking down to anyone. I, I got a lot of things I got to work on. Um, but overall, just as a society, like traditional values, traditional, any tradition is knocked down. But then we love, oh, college, my favorite college football team. Yeah. Play the fight song. These are the things I think about. Come on, guys. It's 2022. Anyway, I'll move on. I'll stop boring you. Um, Where do we go to next? Okay. Devastating news out of the NFL. For the first time in league history, a quarterback got a concussion. First time. They've been playing NFL football a long, long time. And um, Tua Tungamailoa, I'm going to mess up his name every time I say it. 
Tua goes down. And it was it was tragic. It was tragic. Taken off on a on a, on a cart. Never like to see that. I'm gonna kind of mix sarcasm and and uh, real concern here for a minute. You're gonna have to decide which is which. But I I believe in my listeners. Uh, first time ever, quarterback injured. First time ever, a guy with a head injury. Um, it's never happened before. Outrageous! How could they have a quarterback in the game? that they knew would get thrown to the ground and hit his head. Everyone knew it was going to happen. How how could they have this? Now, the so-called experts, the talking heads on ESPN, and be like, well, he was injured on Sunday. He was wobbly. This is true. Uh, he was hurt and uh, continued the game. And I know there's all these safety protocols, right? We got to be safe, guys. Safety above all. But... He passed all those protocols, apparently, and was ready to play Thursday in the Thursday night game. Was playing pretty decent. Uh, and so I, I have a few questions. First off, what is to say? Did you see how he got thrown to the ground? He got thrown to the ground. His head hit the ground. Anyone who's played football before that, you know that's an awful feeling when your head snaps back and you hit the grass. Oh, it's the worst. Um, But who's to say that... Tua wouldn't have been injured had he not been hurt on Sunday. My argument is what happened to him on Thursday probably would have resulted in the same injury had he not been hurt on Sunday. Yes? No? It's like the coaches that used to be like, that's a penalty you know, when someone would get hurt. That should be a penalty. Oh, okay, throw the penalty and he'll rise up. He'll be just fine. Injuries happen in football. And and every time stuff like this happens, everyone there's just a huge outrage. I can't believe this has happened. How could they let this happen? We put all these rules in to protect quarterbacks, and we have laws, and there should things happen, man. And uh, I know a Dolphins coach got fired because uh, maybe the protocol he passed and he shouldn't have passed. So th that's the argument: is he shouldn't have been in the game anyway. If the argument is that's why he got hurt. I, I totally disagree with that because he was in the game. He got thrown to the ground legally and he hit his head into the ground. And my argument is even if he wasn't hurt on Sunday, he's probably still being carried off on a stretcher. So if you, the argument is he shouldn't have been in the game because he, you know, there's a protocol set up. This, this is my favorite. This happens all the time. You have a policy, you have laws, you have rules set in place. The laws, policies, they get obeyed. And then something happens. Anyway, so he passes the protocol. He gets hurt. Well, we need to change the protocols. Well, oh, okay, let's not stop yelling. Like, let's, that's fine. We, that's a bad law. We got to change that law. Okay, fine. There's a process. Let's look into that and do it. There's always this outrage. There's, it, and, and it's, it's been an attack on football the past 10 years easily. We cannot have guys hurt. Well, you're playing the wrong sport then. Injuries happen. You can make all these different penalties all you want. Guys still get hurt in the game of football. It is regulated violence. And we all love big hits, and and, and a lot of that's going out of, out of the way. Uh, but there's still plenty of risks in the game. I mean, offensive linemen, defensive linemen, what they go, th go through on a daily basis, no one seems to care about them uh, You know, banging heads and torn up knees and this and that. But two is a smaller guy. He got thrown to the ground and he hit his head. And this outrage, like, how how could this happen? The doctors, and it's like, well, change the rule. Oh, well, actually, we, we followed the policy. Well, then change the policy. And to see ex-football players on there talking about how awful this is and how could they do this and putting guys in a bat, you just roll your eyes like, are you kidding me? You remember what it was like to play. I played at the high school level only. It wasn't very good. And I remember being banged up, seeing stars, and I had multiple concussions throughout my athletic career the worst one I ever had was in basketball you, you don't have pads on that, that that floor is hard i got i picked a fight with a guy bigger than me threw me to the ground hit my head don't remember how we got to the game smelling salts that was a rough one i'm gonna outlaw basketball outlaw that we can't have we, we need to have the uh, basketball players wear those uh those headgear that boxers wear right when they spar you know what boxers and fighters go through i'm not coming 
piggybacking off of uh, Jason Woodlock, fearless, man. Fearless. It's the best daily podcast out there, I think. Covers a wide range of topics and always makes you think. And he was talking about, no one seems to care about fighters. There's literally boxers who die. There's usually one every couple years who dies in the ring. It is regulated violence. No one's forcing these guys to play. And they're very well compensated. Okay? I don't want to hear about, well, people don't know what we go through. No, we don't need to know. But you're also being compensated. It's not like you're being paid 50 bucks a game. You're being very well compensated. There's a lot of people struggling out there. Uh, People who, you know, construction workers, people who build things. People go through a lot. People at sea for, you know, military six months. I mean, cops being shot out. We don't need to hear how hard your job is, football players, how unsafe it is. We understand that. There's there's risks, and you're compensated for it. Well, CTE, give me a break about CTE. Of all the thousands of guys that have played football, and there's been a few cases about this this stuff, Injury. How can injuries happen? We we need to regulate. You can't regulate every. You can't regulate life. Litigate life. You you can't. People see. There's there's different types of people in this world. There's there's a couple different. Some people, something bad happens and they're like, oh man, that's very unfortunate. Man, that's that sucks. And there's other people. It's like, what? This is an outrage. This could have been avoided. Some things could be avoided. But not everything can. You can't regulate life. You can't have a rule. And and sometimes you've got to live and learn. You ever heard that phrase? You know how how, uh, I've learned most of my life is uh, by making mistakes. Right? And sure, do I wish, oh man, I wish there was a law that would have told me what to do and say, hey, no, don't do this. Now we can, you want to flip it and go the other way. You know, there's the Ten Commandments. There's the laws we have in our society. There's uh, rules and regulations, of course. Sometimes we break those and we learn the hard way. One thing my dad always, yeah, you, know, you learn that you know, learn the easy way, you learn the hard way. <laughs> I liked early on to learn the learn the easy way, but I did have plenty of times where I learned the hard way. So. This I I watch football sometimes and, and and hear the talking heads and I listen to a lot of this stuff and it's just it's completely different than what I grew up on and I'm not trying to sound like the old man here although I often am approaching 38 what is going on look at this I got no hair I got glasses I'm talking to no one in a room I am getting old <laughs> very quick my hip I gotta tell you my anyway I just. The outrage of sports broadcasters is hilarious. What it's football, man. And and, and my my thoughts and prayers do go to Tua. Um, I never want to see anyone taken off on a on a stretcher. It's awful. I've refereed a ton of football games and seen that far too many times. But injuries happen, and sometimes there's no, you know, we we have there's no way to avoid some things. I mean, how often do you plan for everything to go right in your day, your week, your year? Things just go wrong. You can't regulate and lit. You have to ad- ad- adjust to them. I mean, I don't see any heart emojis and all this stuff for for fighters. Dude gets knocked out in UFC. What do we all? Oh, we, it's the greatest thing in the world. What a shot! What? A, and well, you know, we'll say, hey, I hope he gets better. Fine, but we jump up and we're screaming, "Yeah, that was incredible! What a shot!" I do it. I love it. I love regulated violence. Pardon me for saying that. One of the best articles I ever read was in college. It was Thank God for Moral Violence. And it was in response to uh, combating evil out there, right? Like moral violence took down the Nazis. Some pretty awful things, right? Killing people. Sometimes you got to kill people who want to kill more people. Newsflash. I know. But regulated violence, I think... Uh, you know, not to go gladiator days and the Romans and people dying and everything, but internally there's something we like about that. We like seeing two grown men fight. We like seeing uh, football teams and the, the, the sound of the pads. That's why I've really, this whole 
fantasy football world we live in where, oh man, all these touchdowns and the touchdown catches. I'm like, yeah, but I love a good fourth and one, man, where the pads collide and a guy barely makes it or doesn't make it. Um, I used to love the big hits. That's not allowed anymore. This is why we can't have nice things. Because too many guys, oh, that's, uh, we got to take that out of the game. We, we can't, uh, we can't have a guy be responsible himself for having a head on a swivel. No, no. He needs to be not hit from the side, blindsided, because we can't, we got to make a rule that doesn't allow that because these guys are not looking around when they're, they're running and they get blindsided. Can't have that anymore. So anyway, to Tua, to any other quarterback, to any other football player, who's going to get injured? Guess what? Tonight is Thursday Night Football. Someone's going to get hurt. I promise. This weekend, someone will be injured. Dak Prescott hurt his, broke his finger just throwing the football and hit. And I know that the head trauma, totally different, right? That's totally different. Guys know what they sign up for. I'm sorry. And if they don't, Eric Crouch, one of the greatest college football players of all time, Heisman winner from Nebraska, uh, back when they used to, you know, win games. Uh, incredible option quarterback. Came to the NFL, came to the Rams, tried playing wide receiver. I think he lasted one preseason game, got just taken out over the middle uh, and retired instantly said, no, this is not for me. <laughs> so some guys, sorry, you, you want to make millions of dollars. And I know, well, Matt, later on in life, look at Terry, Br Terry Bradshaw has cancer. All right. And, and a lot of these guys, yeah, their hands are destroyed and, and their, their hips and, you know, everything's beat up, but you know what? So is the firefighters and they're not being compensated uh, $40 million a year, whatever guys make. So get over it. This, this war on football, it's real. It's been real. That's why I love seeing kids play it. I love seeing uh, people care about it and really like the game within the game. You know, it used to be when a big hit happened. Oh, man. Now it's, oh, man. We're getting softer as a society. And uh, I'm not for it. Um, let's move on to the Brady divorce. Look at, I don't like talking about people's lives. Uh, but I, well, I guess I do. <laughs> so, um, I talk about mine as well. So this is a funny thing here where people are like, how could, how could Tom Brady come back to play football? And as Giselle's like, well, you know, we don't know the full story. We don't know who's mad at who, although we can assume Tom Brady said he was, re would retire and it would it take 40 days. He said, nah, never mind. So she's probably mad that he can't give this thing up. And you know what? There's an addiction to what Tom Brady's doing, an addiction to football, an addiction to the preparation to playing, to being great, to chasing another ring. And at some point he's going to give, he's not going to play at 60 years old, right? It's going to be in the next couple of years, but that wasn't good enough for Giselle. She wants him done. Now she said 45, you said you'd be done. Plus, you know, you promised you retired. Um, my point to all this is that in any relationship, I've been in a couple, not many, not a ton of experience. I'm not trying to tell Tom Brady or Giselle how to operate, but uh, I think that's a good lesson to all of us that if we expect somebody to change who they are, Tom Brady and Giselle have been married for, what is it, 14 years, I think. Um, and it, they've been, you know, the ideal uh, couple, couple, especially in, in celebrity land, right? But if you get involved with someone and you expect them to change over time, you're in for a rude awakening. You should know the person you're with. You should know the things you like and dislike about it. And there's things you can uh, work on. But I don't know. I think like her expecting him to change who he is doesn't seem right. Um, maybe some people are saying, well, she gave up her life and her career to raise a kid. And it's like, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how modeling works, how long you keep doing that or, or whatever. But uh, I don't know, a guy who's going to work every day, making more millions every year, like, all right. I, I, My personal feeling is that she has wanted to be very much mo more um, involved in uh, the, what do you call it, the worldly things out there. I think she wants to be a lot more outspoken. I have a feeling her and Tom are very different, maybe even uh, politically. That's just speculation on my part, by the way, guys, you know, 
Um, she does seem very free spirited, probably wants to, you know, preach more on, uh, the climate crisis and, and things of that nature. She's a very one very much with nature and who, again, whatever your belief, I don't care. I don't care, but I feel that she expected him to change who he was and he's not going to. And even when he retired, he was going to become a broadcaster. He was still going to be gone three or four days a week. Right. He'd be fly out on Friday or Saturday, do the team stuff game Sunday, maybe be home Sunday night, Monday morning. But I think she wanted more of him and any relationship, any couple should want that. But you've also known who he is these past few years <laughs> since you've been married to the guy. Someone who's that ambitious and that hungry and that competitive, they don't change. They're, they're, they're the few and the proud, right? Maybe she has something she wants to do, but I don't see why she can't go, go do it. If you have something you want to do, what do you need, Tom, to be at home? You guys have, I'm sure, babysitters or whatever. Plus, your kids aren't toddlers anymore. I think maybe she just wants him around more and maybe not watching film, you know, four or five hours a day at home instead of uh, hanging out with, I don't know. I don't know all the, it's total speculation on my part, but I, but the, the thing I gather from it is that we can't expect the people we're with to change some things we want them to. It's, it's nice if they do, but that should never be the expectation. And I think at times people have thought that about me. Oh, you'll, he'll, he's going to change. He'll grow out of this. I know, not really. <laughs> we, we don't change all that. There's a great line in Ocean's Eleven, and it's uh, Rusty, played by Brad Pitt, and he's talking with Saul, the old, salty uh, veteran. I think he's at like a dog track or something, and they're talking about robbing this casino and uh, the next big job, right? They're just, they're criminals. And Brad Pitt says something like, Saul, Oh, he, Saul says, I've changed. I'm not into that stuff anymore. And Brad Pitt goes, Saul, guys like you and I don't change. We get older, we get sloppier, we don't change. And that's always stuck with me. A very funny line. Um, we get old or we get sloppy. I think it was, yeah, one of the two. Um, but <laughs> so that stuck with. So anyway, in summary, I I, I hope they uh, figure it out. The uh, Brady divorce here. I didn't think I'd be talking about celebrity uh, marriages when I woke up today, but uh, hey, that is what it is. Um, before I end the show, I am going to talk to you guys about uh, 10 popular things that I don't like, and that's how we'll wrap up the show today because we live in a world where you know likes and clicks, and I wish I could unlike some things on uh, social media, and I wrote these down real quick, so I'm going to come up with some more items throughout the uh, the next few weeks here leading up to the holiday season, which is when I get a little more cheery and things. But for now, I can still be negative. And uh, I am going to be a little more negative right now. And I think you guys know why. We need some more coffee. That is for sure this morning. All right. Here we go. So this past Monday, the Los Angeles Rams traveled up to Santa Clara, uh, that's up near the Bay, for those that don't know. Up in, uh, you know, not quite San Francisco, but, um, and all over their walls, faithful to the Bay, right? All their fans, faithful to the Bay, even those in Southern California. So the Rams go up there and uh, did not play their best by any means. It was a lot better performance than last year's Monday night game, where I pretty much forfeited the season, said the Rams got the ran the ball on you guys 40-something times. Stabbed you in the throat repeatedly and uh, just embarrassed you. The There was an embarrassment this Monday as well, although not as bad. As bad as the Rams played, they were still in the game up until the very end. Uh, talked to a 49er fan uh, who was a little nervous uh, until that final pick six. So I, I had the faith, uh, even though they were playing awful, just like, okay, this is one of those, those gritty games. They were moving the ball early. Uh, throwing the ball to Cooper Cup every play, it seems like. I don't know how he's open every play. But um, anyway, Rams were only able to get nine points. When they got the field, I think they went right up the field, got inside the 10, and they had to settle for three early on. I was like, this is a bad, bad sign. And then the Niners went to business, went to town, doing what the Niners do. And Jimmy G leading the team. And I said when when uh, Trey Lance got hurt, I said, I, I think this team's better off with Jimmy G. I really do. So anyway, a few observations from the game um, is just Jimmy G, James Garoppolo is very good at 
short, quick passes, right? I think any Niner fan who is uh, who is honest and gives an honest assessment uh, of the team uh, will say that. I've heard it directly from them. I didn't realize it until they started talking about it. And I was like, oh, yeah, I guess he does. Um, has he thrown long touchdowns before? Well, yes, he has. But even in the NFC Championship game last year, or was it week, the week 18 game, whichever one it was against the Rams, you know, it was a Debo Samuel who threw the long touchdown pass. I think they ran that trick play. And uh, Jimmy G is very good at that intermediate route. And I swear for the first 10 or so passes of the game, 10 yards left side, right at the numbers, whether it was a button hook or a slant or whatever. And I'm just like, he's very good at, at the quick pass. He's not that mobile, right? So he's very quick and it's frustrating as a defense. So it was beyond me. Seeing watching this game over the course of time, the previous week, the Rams played the Cardinals and they had a great game plan playoff. Let Car Kyler throw underneath stuff. He wants to go deep. He, he wants to run around, let him get frustrated. The Rams were on the field. The defense was for like 80 snaps. Didn't allow a touchdown. It was a great game plan, but you're not playing the same team the next week. So what do the Rams do? They're playing this like off coverage. There's not a lot of zone, especially on like third and long when they know Jimmy G James Garoppolo will not throw the ball deep. It's like sometimes you got to challenge somebody to do something. Like in basketball, when you're guarding some guy, you know what? I'm going to play off you. I'm playing off you until you hit maybe not one. Anyone can hit one. Maybe you hit two or a couple, two, two shots. All right. He hit it from, he hit it from 15 feet. All right. Let's see if he can hit it from 18. Oh, okay. 20 feet. Okay. This guy could shoot. Now we got to get up on him, right? So the Rams played this off coverage. And what are the, what do the nine, when the Niners are best is when they get the ball to Debo quickly, right? Just get the ball to, he's a running back. He's a wide receiver. He's the most versatile player in the league. And so for big plays, when's the last time you saw the Niners throw like a 40 yard pass down the field to Debo? Not too often. The biggest plays in the night for the Niners were the quick throws. The, obviously the big touchdown to Debo. The there was a play to the fullback, Juszczyk, who I love. Uh, I, I one of the most underrated guys in the league for the uh, 49ers fullback, right out of the backfield. It just no, no one went with him. He caught it and took off running for 40 yards, 50 yards. And the play to Debo, it's third and 13. And you look at the Rams DBs, they're all off by like 10 yards. And I understand, hey, protect the sticks. But you're telling me in the previous matchups, the previous six losses with the 49ers, you haven't seen that this is what they do. Let's throw a quick pass to Debo. Boom, let him do his thing. He breaks loose. Yards after made made a few guys look embarrassing. By, by the way, Jalen Ramsey, if you're going to be Mr. Tough Guy, Mr. I, and I like his energy. I think he's a great defensive back. Um, if that's the best effort you're going to put forth on a, on a tackle, you, you got you to gotta shut up and not talk anymore. You can't be running your mouth. And then when it comes to you one-on-one -on -one to tackle someone, that's the performance you get. Mr. Tough Guy, Mr. Mouth, Mr. Jaw Jacking. Come on, man. Where was the tough guy attitude? Where was, and usually he tackles guys in the, you know, but that was embarrassing. Debo made you look foolish. And I don't look at Debo's just tree trunks running out there. I understand that dude is thick and fast and bulky, never, but my goodness, you're a professional. You can't, you can't talk all this trash about how tough you are. And then when a tough moment, moment arises, you're like, oh, let me grab his shoelaces. Taylor Rapp. I don't know how many tackles in your career you're going to miss. Goodness sake. Step up. Stop diving at fuck ankles. You're killing me. You're killing me, Taylor Rapp. Anyway. Oh, this is frustrating, I tell you. So anyway, they get the ball to Debo. He takes off running. And, uh, you know, it's the greatest play in Monday Night Football history. You got to listen to that. Hear all that. Debo! All this nonsense. When it shouldn't even have been a first down. You make a couple tackles, embarrassing, embarrassing tackles. And I get all the Facebook, all the lambs, all the lambs. News flat. The, the, wait a minute. The Ram, the Niners beat the Rams in the regular season. Oh, how could I, how could I deal with this? And I'm frustrated. I'm mad. I'm angry, but I got news for you. When I was a kid, I think it was 16 straight, maybe 17 straight over the Rams. Dark times. That's what I grew up on. This is my bread and butter, folks, is watching the, the Niners beat the Rams in the regular season. 
my only hope and prayer is that they get him in the regular season or the postseason. If the Rams are even there. So I look at the NFL schedule and I go, oh, the Niners. Well, there's two losses. I just, some things you just got to accept. I'm not happy about it. You got to accept that uh, for whatever reason, maybe it's a lack of toughness, a lack of energy. I don't know. Could just be a better football team than you. Sometimes you just got to accept things. And if you accept that, hey, they're a better football team than you, then maybe when you do beat them, it's sweeter. I don't know. That's why the win in the NFC Championship was such a big deal last year to me, was to knock the Niners out of the playoffs, to end the six-game losing streak, to shut up all of the 49er faithful, especially here in Los Angeles. Um, It was huge. And I, I was like, man, I hope they win the Super Bowl. But that was so sweet. I, that was the biggest cheer I ever, most yelling. I think I screamed for two straight minutes um, during that interception last year at the end of the game. So I hate the 49ers. You guys all know this. You guys got to fit. You know, it's all the social media tough guys. You got it. You got it. You, you, we have so many guys in that are, that are the tough guy at the basketball court. Who's not even in the game, but he's talking all the smack, right? Hey, I, I, just, ah, you can't dunk. Ah, ah, nice, nice handle. But like, get in. Who are you? What are you doing? I'm just here to talk smack. And then you say anything about their team. Oh, uh, you're supposed to lose. Well, you know, yeah, we were Jimmy G. And, uh, yeah, Dak Prescott. Uh, supposed to lose. It's like this defense mechanism. Anyway, I I I, I vented and ran. I I got the receipts, as people say. Uh, I know I've said some things on here that probably haven't aged well, but it's only week five. Rams are two and two. Cowboys are three and one. That game this this Sunday. That's going to be something. And then uh, the Niners. Three and uh, two and two. Everyone in the NFC West is two and two. And uh, the Rams, I looked at the schedule when they had their 10 game home, home, uh, 10 game home schedule this year. They get the extra game against the, the, uh, you start with eight, you get the extra game against the AFC opponent this year, the 17 game schedule. And then one of their road games is against the Chargers at so 10 games at SoFi Stadium. I thought of it as an advantage, but then I thought longer about it. And I go, actually, even with 10 home games, when you bring in the 49ers, the Cowboys, and the Raiders all coming to SoFi, that's like road games. <laughs> so, man, when you think about it, I, I was like, man, 10 home games, that's awesome. But actually, might be 10 road games, <laughs> only seven home games, <laughs> even though you're at SoFi for 10 of them. And I'm just, I'm venting here, I'm speaking, I'm thinking out loud. Uh, why you don't press the Ebo saying, I, I am not a defensive coordinator. Once upon a time, I was. Uh, why you don't press Debo and the 49er receivers and force them, force Jimmy G off his spot a little bit, especially on short yardage with Debo? Press the guy. I don't know if, if you can go cover one where you press with a man free or cover two, even cover two with man under. Uh, something you can't run the same stuff and be like, oh, we're shocked this happened again. Because you know. Case in point, what happened at the end of the game? Someone did some homework in that short yardage situation. What did they do? The Rams tried a little bubble. Oh, let's throw it. Ah, we're going the other way. Why don't you try that? <laughs> Your receiver goes to block. Jump the route. That was an incredible play by the night. It drove me nuts, but I just sat there in silence because I... That's the that's the painful addiction of the Rams is that you just man, like, okay they play bad but they're only down eight okay they miss field goal okay come on they're moving the ball they're moving the ball man they're gonna miss a two point conversion but hey they're gonna get there they're driving come on Stafford I but ah! why does this happen I know why it happens because of the L A Rams that's why and last year three game losing streak in November I gave up. And good things happen. So the season is still young. That's the beauty of the NFL and the curse is, is, is you overreact to everything each and every week. And you gotta wait seven days to play again, or four days if you got the Thursday game, eight days if you got the Monday game. And you overanalyze and you dissect it. I thought with all the Rams injuries on the offensive line, it's not an excuse. Give up seven sacks and not have any yourselves. Um, but the 49ers are banged up too. 
Trent Williams is out. They got some missing pieces on the offensive line. You got to you gotta get the next man up. My hope is that in the next few months, um, things get cleaned up. Those guys who haven't played much, maybe they get more reps. Hopefully uh, they get things in order here. But the Rams running game is a concern. And uh, Allen Robinson, I don't know who this guy is, why he's even on. He hasn't done anything. I'm looking for an explosive game from him soon. Hopefully Van Jefferson gets back. Uh, we shall see. But that Niner, that Niner curse, it's uh, it's alive and well. It feels like all those years the Dodgers couldn't beat the Giants. Um, uh, not the Giants. Um, sorry, slip there. You know, L.A. versus San Francisco. Uh, anyway, um, when the Dodgers couldn't beat the Yankees, right? I think it was even before they moved out to, uh, to L.A. Um, the Yankees on the Dodgers and the Niners on the Rams. I said this last week. San Francisco 49ers, co-owners with Stan Kroenke of the L.A. Rams. Unfortunately, so will you pre- look at the, the the fortunate thing is the Rams play the Niners here in uh, a couple of weeks again. Fortunate, unfortunate. I'm seeing it as fortunate. Why? Not because I'm excited about another shot, but that we can get this over early this year. I don't have to sit around waiting for oh the Rams play the Niners in that final game of the season. That'd be great if it meant something, and then it did. And I'm pulling my hair out and losing my mind and not enjoying uh, my December time, January time, whatever. So Rams play the Niners again. This is week five. We just had week four. They play in week eight again here. So Rams have three more games than a buy or a buy and then whatever it is. But let's just rip the Band-Aid off. Let's get it over with. Um, so five stadium would be flooded with uh, Southern California front runners uh, who, again, I think about this daily. 49ers live rent free in my head. Um, all you Southern California 49er fans. I love this argument back to the whole, well, it's 2022. My favorite is, well, I've always been a fan. Yeah, but that's, that's not an answer why you're a fan. Most of you became 49er fans or Cowboy fans. I'll throw this in. By the way, I'm going to do a weekly uh, ranking of the most annoying football fan bases. Uh, and it's going to be the same three teams every week. San Francisco 49ers, Dallas Cowboys, Las Vegas Raiders. And yes, I include their city names because no one else seems to do that. I'm a Niner fan. Yeah, where are they from? Well, they're, they're, you know, anyway. faithful to the Bay. Yeah. You sound like an idiot here in Southern California. Um, are there people in Boston that grow up to be Yankee fans? Are there, does this happen? You grow, grow up in Michigan as an Ohio state fan. What, what is wrong with you people? I'm the backwards one. Me. Who are you rooting for in the Olympics? Are you, Canada? Well, you just, I don't know who you're rooting for. You don't root from where you're from, so I'm curious. This will happen every every couple weeks here on the podcast. So, well, my dad was a fan. Uh, I need more than that. Was your dad from there? Keep in mind, and this is all you need to know, most of you guys were 49er fans and Cowboy fans. When you were kids, I get it. And the argument is, well, there were no teams here. Actually, no. If you do the math, there were two teams here. And yet you decided to betray your city, your county, your region. Most of you became fans when there were two teams here. That's why I give the Raiders a pass. You're a Raider fan. All right. LA at one point. I get it. It's cool. It was the hip thing to do. And uh, up until last year, the only Super Bowl champion in Los Angeles. So I give the Raiders a pass. And the Rams play the Cowboys this weekend. Um, I'm not even going to be here. I'm going to be out of town. Um, but I'll be watching. And it'll probably ruin my vacation. As I'm sitting there watching, going, you got to be kidding me. Um, so I'm not even going to. I'm going to let it all go now. I'm going to let it go. Um, What else? Where else do I go from here? And why were you, why, why did you randomly pick the Lakers and Dodgers? Well, my dad did that. Oh, okay. Why? Why? I need answers better than, oh, well, I've always been one. That's not an answer. It's not. I'm sorry. 
But anyway, you guys will have to, you people, yes, you people, you 49er fans mostly, you're going to have to live with this sin a long time. It's an embarrassment, I think. Well, Matt, you know what's an embarrassment is the way the Rams play. You're right. You are right. And I grew up on this. And I move forward. Not really. <laughs> I'll be, I'll be uh, pulling my hair out the next uh, four games in, the next uh, 13 games here on the schedule. But it's why we love it. It's what makes the win sweeter is going through the losses, is suffering, right? Going through the dark times. It makes the light at the end of the tunnel worth chasing, we'll say, Any, even though. Uh, hey, for now, they're still the defending champs. Until they get taken down, until someone takes the belt, they're still the defending champs. And uh, that belt will probably be passed real soon. Uh, but uh, I'm all about, hey, recent relevance, right? It's all about what have you done for me lately. It's a new season and uh, can't live in the past forever, but you can cherish uh, a recent Super Bowl as uh, as I will here going forward, knowing that it may not happen again for a very, very long time. All right, as we end the show, 10 popular things I don't like. 10 popular things I don't like. Uh, you could say the 49ers. You could say the Cowboys. You could say, uh, oh, I know one. See, I'm already adding to the list. I might uh, erase something here. Um, yeah, I'm going to erase that one because, I, okay, let's, here we go. You guys ready? I got to wrap this up here. I got a full day of uh, podcast recordings mostly for the uh, charge to keep stuff. Okay. Popular things I don't like. I'm going to come up with more throughout the uh, the year and uh, I'll list these. It may not be 10 each time. It might just be one or two as they come to me. Uh, but I'm going to go uh, down this list in no particular order. I did do 10 of them, but uh, here we go. Number one, popular things I don't like. Fantasy sports. I've said this before. I despise fantasy sports. It, it, it makes us into this instant gratification Age, how'd your team do this week? Oh, the Rams lost. No, 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 your fantasy team. Fantasy? Think about the words are coming out of your mouth. Fantasy. Fantasy football. Who came up with this? This is stupid. This is very, very stupid. Uh, there's a lot of money passed around. There's a lot of popularity. I don't like it at all. I don't care how many catches a wide receiver had on a team I don't care about. I care about, uh, the, man, the amazing upset we saw, that great fourth and one play, that incredible highlight. Uh, oh, what are my defense fantasy points? I can't watch football with, with most people because that's all they care about. I don't want to cheer for a San Francisco uh, running back. I don't want to do those things. So it, it, it's just part of the, uh, the, 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 not the, evolution but the negative uh way in which our society has gone downhill is fantasy sports becoming a bigger thing than than real sports uh number two look at i've tried i talked to some people recently who were talking how great this show was i tried there's people i really respect that i just i don't get it i don't care about it the office i know i know shame you don't like the office same with like parks and rec i do like that ron swanson guy because he had some like I don't know, good one-liners or whatever, but I'll I'll just stick with the memes. I don't like the show The Office. I tried it. I watched a few episodes. Oh, you got to give it longer. No, I'm done. I don't like the format. Uh, I do like some of the actors, and I know I am like complete probably the only person in America who doesn't like it. I don't like The Office. I it was it was not worth my time. I'm going. I there's no plot. I know this is like new comedy. The whole interview format. I don't like it. And you can call me crazy for not doing so we all have imperfections uh maybe this is one of my only ones no there's plenty and there's probably more on this list that will anger you so the office i don't know why i just i'm sorry there's gonna be more items on here that you gotta see this you gotta watch this movie and it's like no i am sorry it was, that was terrible i i am next time you suggest something to me um we're gonna have words or i'm gonna go watch uh something else uh number three iced coffee i mean for years, don't let your coffee get cold. Don't let it get cold. Now it's celebrated. And again, this is I I when you look at the, the lack in society, the decline in our society, this is one more example. I mean, iced coffee. Let's make coffee so that like 15-year-old girls will like it. Or 16-year-old boys, whatever. Whoever, you know, iced coffee. We'll put a bunch of frappuccino and caramel, and we'll we'll even make it hip and sugary and cool. 
drink coffee like a man, will you? Sorry, a human. Oh my goodness, a person, whatever. Drink coffee like an adult. Grow up. You don't put a little cream in there, fine. But iced coffee, are you out of your mind? I've even tried, I go, this is horrible. Why? This is like a, a hot Coca-Cola. Why would you do this? What is wrong with us? Black is white, white is black. Everything's upside down in our world. And it starts with iced coffee. I won't stand for it. I will lead protests uh, in the streets. This is absolutely ridiculous that this is still a thing. Popular things I don't like. I won't rant too much about this one. You guys already know how I feel. Running quarterbacks in the NFL. It's foolish. It's stupid. Um, it leads to problems. Oh, look at all the highlights. My quarterback, my fantasy quarterback, had three touchdown passes and two touchdown runs. This is phenomenal. Not sustainable. Not smart. Guys going to get hurt more. Um, it's foolish. It's nonsensical. It's not uh, what Hall of Fame quarterbacks do. Uh, number five popular things I don't like. Instant replay. It has ruined sports. People will say it's been great. There's been less controversy. I would argue there's more controversy. I would argue uh, cameras everywhere, HD, zooming in, zooming out, have made uh, ordinary plays into big deals. Like for hundreds of years, this play at first base wasn't a big deal. Everyone accepted it as is. Guy tagged someone on the fingernail. He barely got it in there. Uh, now it's like, we'll zoom in. Let's see. We got to get this right, right? 100% uh, accuracy, integrity of the game, all this nonsense uh, that, that has just gotten us off the beaten path because so many, I don't know, so many games were ruined apparently by bad calls. Uh, I stand with the, uh, the the men out there who are making the calls in real time, not this instant replay, instant gratification world that we live in. Number six on popular things I don't like. This is kind of, eh. I could go either. Uh, I'll say this one with a caveat. Uh, pets. Yes, pets. Man, you match you animal cruelty person. Uh, I I I like animals. Not all of them. Uh, many of them are delicious. Uh, and then other ones, they're fun to be around. You know, you got a dog. You got a what? You whatever. Dogs are cool. Um, I don't like everything they do, though. Um, I don't want to clean up after it. I don't understand. People lose their mind over pets. They become weak. They become different people. Oh, Matt, doesn't your heart get soft for them? No, no, it doesn't. Is a dog cool to kind of rub around and, you know, chase around and, and maybe sit and watch a game with you? Yeah, that's very cool. We had roommates who had who had a pet. Um, will I have a dog someday? Probably. But they also bark non nonstop. They do other things. I don't understand the love affair with, with these animals. Well, Matt, there's nothing like the love of a pet. There's lots of things better than the love of a pet. I'm the old crazy person. I know as this is all my fault, but man, you'd be much more calm if you had a pet and maybe sick people get, and they have pets. Okay. That's great. I'm saying it's a popular thing. I don't necessarily like that's all. I'm not saying it's wrong. It's just something I don't need or really have a deep desire for. Well, listen, Val's probably going to yell at me for this one, but anyway, pets, I don't get it. Number seven, soccer. What is wrong with the world? It is. This is a game that it, it's, you only use your feet. Um, it is the beautiful game, as they say. You, they won't let you run behind defenders. You, like no hail marys. You can't run a, a go route past the the fullback to get. Oh, hey, I'm open. Kick it to me. Let me let me slam slam dunk this this kick this goal. You can't do that. Um, there's too many games that are zero zero. Uh, I, an incredible game is two to one. Yet these same people can't watch a baseball game because it's boring. Ah, uh, soccer. The clock counts up. It doesn't stop ever. Then they add this mysterious time at the end of the game. Um, if a guy trips, he needs to be taken out on a stretcher. I cannot stand soccer. The World Cup, I think, is coming up here in November. I will boycott it. I will not watch it. I will not talk about it. I don't care what any of you say or if it makes me some kind of uh, you know ugly American. I hold that title proudly. Uh, number eight, do-it-yourself projects. I don't like fixing things. I don't like making things. Um, I will do dishes. I will do laundry. I will cook dinner. But you ask me to put this table together. You ask me to, uh, oh, this is a great video on how to do something. I don't have the patience. I don't read very well as it is. I don't like reading directions. Well, the fulfillment afterwards that you get after uh, seeing your your work, no. I don't. Most of it isn't good work. It's crooked. I strip the screw. Uh, I 
I, I don't like do it yourself projects. I want to have someone else do it for me. And usually I can't afford it. So I just live with it. And that is the nature of the, now you could, well, the podcast, that's do it yourself. Yes. This is hours of torture. You don't understand to come on here and vent and talk about how much the Rams uh, disappoint me. Uh, it's, it's come a long way. It, it wasn't always this way. It took a great amount of time to get to this point. And uh, a lot of tears have been shed. I don't do do-it-yourself projects. I don't want to learn to do certain things. Sorry, maybe that makes me lazy. I don't think so. It just makes me not interested. Number nine, cars. Now I have a nice car, or at least at one point I did. It's kind of run itself into the ground. But this whole um, you know, macho thing, oh man, this, this car, that car. I want a car that runs four wheels, preferably four doors. I tried two doors one time, wasn't, uh, didn't work out well. Um, I like cars that have decent gas mileage because gas is approaching $8 a gallon here in Southern California. I don't want to fix cars. I know how to change a tire. I don't want to do it necessarily. Uh, car magazines. Oh man, you got to look at this car, that car. Maybe if I had more money, I'd be more interested in cars. But for the most part, as a red-blooded American, I don't really care about cars. I want my cars to work. When they don't work, I get mad. I get mad because then I have to pay someone to, to spend a lot of money. I always keep up with my thing on my cars, my oil change, make sure the tires are inflated. I do the little things. I make sure the car is clean inside for the most part. But as a guy, uh, I am not a car guy. I don't understand buying four or five different cars. I don't understand these things, um, things, popular things that I don't like. Uh, it's just not for me. I just want my car to work well, have great air conditioning, and uh, maybe a decent sound system inside for the listening of podcasts, especially to the Get Home Safe podcast. And finally, a couple of movies that are very popular that I have addressed in the past, but I will also address at this moment. Uh, Napoleon Dynamite and The Big Lebowski. The Napoleon Dynamite I, I watched years ago as a teenager, I think. Uh, there's so much hype went into it. It's so funny. It's so hilarious. Could not stand it. Same can be said for The Big Lebowski. Maybe it was just too much hype. Too much time. I didn't mind the character drinking white Russians out of his bathrobe. Very, very, very funny. I'm the dude. Ha ha. Napoleon Dynamite. What even was that? I can't stand movies like this, especially when I'm told you're really going to like this. It's really, really funny. And then you sit there and you go, when does the movie start? Can't not stand it. There will be plenty of other things on this list, guys. But uh, for now, those are 10 popular things I don't like. That I will relay to you if there's if you have a question for me, you want me to you want to find out if I do or not do or don't like something, please send me a message uh, on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, wherever you uh, follow the podcast. And you can always email me too at get home safe podcast at yahoo.com or get home safe pod at gmail.com and I will respond accordingly. But as for me, those are 10 things, popular things I don't like here on the get home safe podcast podcast that's it for me guys my rant is over and uh, i will be back with you next week but guys as always no matter what you're doing whether you're out on the town or around in third base get home safe <laughs>